two videos in one day because I am falling behind. Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is Hannah or Hand Grenade and I'm a huge fan of horror. And this month I'm doing the 31 days of horror. That is where I watch a horror film every single day. The videos might not come out every single day though. But we won't talk about that. <laughs> For those of you who don't know, 31 days of horror on my channel is me basically watching films I've never seen before. They need to be available on streaming services too. This video will be about The Haunting in Connecticut. So this film is a 2009 paranormal movie directed by Peter Cornwell and stars Virginia Madsen and Kyle Gullner, I think is how you pronounce it. The plot follows a family who moved to Connecticut to be closer to a hospital for one of the son's uh, cancer treatment just to make it easier for the family. The house they move into, however, uh, is too good to be true and harbours dark secrets of the past. This film uh, you'll be able to find on Netflix UK. This is one of the films that I've heard this title so many times. Obviously I was quite young when this film came out so I didn't watch it at the time. I kind of just skipped over it so I, I, I just never got around to watching it. I've always been interested in seeing it and then I saw it was on Netflix and I was like you know what yeah I'll go, right then I'll give it a go. I think I remember seeing the trailer when I was younger because I vividly remember seeing the main actor covered in lettering uh, that's been like carved into his skin in the trailer or an image or something because I remember that quite clearly but I know I've never seen this film. So this film was fine. It was a perfectly serviceable horror film. I didn't love it and I didn't hate it. It kind of just is. It's definitely the type of film that I put on in the afternoon when I have nothing better to do and it just gives me like 90 to 100 minutes of just a few spooks you know that being said i do think this film relied a bit too heavily on its score when it came to the scares like you'd see something kind of move in a shot and then it'd be supported by a loud sting from the violins and i'm like it would have been so much creeper if it just moved and then you just notice it yourself because you may not notice it straight away if you rewatch the film that that could freak you out you know but that's just me i kind of prefer when scares are like set up for you to notice them and they're not obvious and they're not telegraphed so much that's that's kind of a preference of mine however i will admit there was one good jump scare that got me but the rest were far too telegraphed and i can't you know they were by the books i kind of knew what was coming i have to say it it's too hard to believe that this is based on a true story when i see that phrase now i tend to like it tends to switch me off. I'm like, really? We're still doing this? This fucking shit started back when Texas Chainsaw Massacre came out. Like, because this shit's been going on since like the 70s, maybe even earlier. We all know it's a load of old shit. Like, anyway, I, I digress. I, I, I just can't with the based on a true story. As a haunting film, you can expect this to hit all the beats of a kind of traditional ghost film there's the library search for information exposition scene there's a seance scene there's a wise character that comes into the family's home and goes this place is haunted like there's all those kind of beats you know i don't think it adds anything new to the genre but i don't think it's one of the worst i've ever seen either i i think it just is as i said i think this film just exist. I mean, I keep praising acting recently, but I think that's just because the films I've watched, I've really enjoyed the performances in them, so I'll give them that credit when I can. But Virginia Madsen and Kyle Gorner here, are, I found them very believable, like the son that's going through all this pain through the cancer treatment and is feeling super ill and I believed him. I was like, yep, he seems ill. And then the mother dealing with the issues of her son being incredibly sick. And you know, Madsen seems to like throwing herself in the fire. If you've seen Candyman and this film, you'd understand. With that being said, moving into spoiler territory, I liked the way the main ghost was kind of shrouded in darkness. You couldn't really ever see his face until like the very end of the film. And I enjoyed that. I was like, don't show me too much. I can give it a pass for it only really doing it at the end. But even then the makeup was kind of creepy and then it showed you how this ghost died. And I was like, dude that's pretty dark like maybe it's just the idea of someone getting burnt alive is just fucking horrible in my head i mean i'm sure it's fucking horrible for everyone else it's horrific so whenever that does appear in a film i'm always like oh that's too much for me <laughs> i don't i don't know why out of everything else that's the thing that always gets me i liked the concept of people being closer to death 
being able to see the ghosts and if you're healthy you can't really so that's why obviously um Gorna's character could see all the ghosts because he was going through this cancer treatment and he was getting closer and closer to being super super ill with his cancer and it is said in the film that they don't know how he's still alive i thought that was a nice little touch i'm sure it's been in other films but i i can't pinpoint any from the top of my head but it doesn't seem like a brand new concept but i, I kind of liked it for this one the practical effects were all pretty good as well the bit with carving the letters into the skin was pretty gross and cutting off the eyelids i was like that, that's gross uh but i'm a little bit squeamish to be fair i will say that the cgi with the weird cloth thing coming out the mouth i get that it was meant to be like ectoplasm or some shit i can't remember what they said in the film but with the cloth coming out of the mouth it's on some of the promotional images of the film too it looked a bit shit in my opinion i get that it was replicating real <laughs> real images that had this um obviously they've been proven to be fake um since but yeah that was not great in terms of effects but the practical stuff that they did worked well one shot i did like that did stand out to me is when the priest took the ghost the ghost's bones from the house outside and you see that he's removed the spirit through the spirit being in matt's room and then it kind of jumping out and then being outside his window like looking in i don't know the imagery of that that sort of thing just kind of creeps me out i don't like the idea of someone looking in through my window it's always a bit ugh. <laughs> it's always a bit um scary to think about someone looking through your window so as i say i thought that was a creepy shot but again it was met with a bit of a musical sting which i felt was unneeded i think this film relied a bit too heavily on a scary score to signify the scares overall i thought this film was okay i think if you're looking for just a ghosty film to put on for halloween for the spooky season it'll do its job it as i say it's perfectly serviceable uh, as a movie it's nothing spectacular but it's watchable in my opinion so i rate this film a dirty dishcloth floating out of your mouth during the bog standard seance scene thank you for watching um if you'd like to keep up to date with uh my other socials you can find me on twitter and instagram you can keep up to date with the films that i've been watching throughout the month and for the rest of the year because i'm actually using it again you can go follow me over on letterbox because i'll keep that updated and you can catch me over on twitch too i stream quite regularly so it'd be nice to see you over there all the links for all my socials are in the description so be sure to check those out i do have three other reviews one of the hills have eyes one of tremors and one of Zombieland double tap so be sure to check those out as well and um i'll see you in the next one thank you for watching bye